y'all. It's your boy J.H. Gibbons here. And I'm Lucy. And welcome to yet another episode of your Chromas Podcast, episode 109. If you are listening, it means you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or if you can hear a podcast. If you are watching our beautiful smiling faces today, it can only mean one thing. It means you're looking at us on YouTube. And before you do anything else, here's what I need you to do. I need you to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. You see, the next time you hop on YouTube and you're scrolling, you're picking up your phone, you're trying to refresh that page, this episode or any other episode of your Chromas podcast will be sitting there waiting for you. And most of all, we'll see. It is free to do so. It doesn't cost you anything but a little bit of consistency, a little bit of effort invested into you and knowing how much you matter. And we start that by just sharing this sort of episode with you. So if you could do those things Jay just mentioned, like our content, share, subscribe, turn on your notification bell, please, we'll be greatly appreciative of it because each one, teach one is our matter. And, it's, and it starts with you. Absolutely, man. What a week it has been. So last week, we talked about the Super Bowl. At the time when we recorded, we ain't know who was going to win. I think we we both had our ideas of who might pull it off. I think we might have said it was close. And, you know, maybe maybe the Chiefs have the edge because of X, Y, Z. Well, it was close. It was close, rather, and the, the Chiefs ended up winning. Um, We watched the whole game. We even bet on it. I, I don't even want to get into that story because, man, it's uh, I'm still scarred from that moment. We'll see. Um, yes. Sitting there looking at one player that decided that they were just not going to put him in. Um, I don't know what happened there, and I'm sure a lot of people were pissed off about that as well because I did see it on Facebook the next day. Um, so I know, I know he specifically ruined a lot of parlay legs. But again, it was a great, it was a great Super Bowl game. Um, again, two black quarterbacks for the first time, Andy Reid, to a another Super Bowl, and then a former coach who used to work with Andy Reid went to the Super Bowl to go against them. Uh, but Chiefs, Pat Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, all those guys. They ended up leaving with the Super Bowl trophy, um, and it was a it was a great game to see, man. Another another thing too, Valentine's Day just passed, man. Um, it, I I had a really great one, you know. My wife surprised me with a really, a really, uh, a really great set of different things. I came home after a long day, man, to uh, to uh, candles draped on the stairs. Walking down the stairs, saw rose petals. Was treated to a back massage. It was. It was incredible, man. We ended up going to dinner after. Um, met you know, met a couple at dinner too. Or was, I think they were celebrating their twentieth or something. Uh, so it was a, it was a really interesting week. A lot of things went down, man. A lot of memorable experiences. Um, and of course, our last episode preparing, you know, for the biggest moment. Um, and you know, I, I think going forth, that's something that we we're trying to do every single week. I think we're, we're looking for moments that I, that I know we can take advantage of maybe some moments that we would have shied away from in the past, but I hope everybody out there who's watching, who's listening, who is a part of this community, I hope you're taking advantage of all of the opportunities that come your way. And I mean, all of them, especially if they are in alignment with your purpose, you cannot let an opportunity go by. You don't know what tomorrow might bring. Tomorrow might not even come for you. So it's always important, we'll see, to, to make sure that you are walking in line with your purpose and you fully understand what that looks like for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, a, a lot of the times you may not know what that is starting out. Um, and I don't think anyone will actually when you really think about it. But the experiences that you come apart um, in life ultimately kind of helps to mold that for you right Jay so uh, you want to just be one to be keen to listen receive you know take in uh, what you're seeing what you're hearing uh, and ultimately just being very um, thoughtful in your actions um, and the decisions you're making in your life because we only have one life that is as we know we don't get a do-over as far as we we know uh, <laughs> um, but make the most of it count and, uh, you know, live not with regret, just, you know, live to learn through your lessons that you experience. And it will ultimately help to define what those purposes are, because those are typically the things that mean the most to you. So if you are able to kind of, you know, embark in that kind of way on your journey, it's never too late to kind of pick that up. And I think that's key to kind of realize and to helping to redefine what a purpose looks like to you. 
um, in, in that vision of what you're willing to do to accomplish that purpose and goal that you've set for yourself. Um, yeah, I, I, I have to say it's probably uh, been that kind of a week for all of us where, um, you know, we've all had a moment or two where we need to reflect on our journey, where we are, uh, where we desire to go and just be very mindful of the decisions we're making. Um, so I just want to make sure you don't forget that you can do that today. If you haven't, this is the moment, this is the time we're letting you know that you can do it. So just, you know, reflect on that. Pause where we are now if you need to as we're going along and just have, give yourself a moment to or two to really think about your direction and what life is in store for you or what you desire for it to be. Um, but yeah, as Jay said, for myself, it was a, it's been, you know, quite a week. Uh, I had, you know, some similar experiences. My Shout out to my son, Josiah. Um, his birthday, he's a V-Day. V V-Day. Um, you know, and uh, it was nice to be able to spend part of that day with him uh, and, you know, just go on from there um, and just, you know, bracing the concept of love and just giving that out and, and being able to just kind of build on memories uh, for years to come. Right. And that's what it was about. Uh, but here we are right now getting ready to, to take and embark you into another life lesson of experiences shared for myself and Jay. Um, so we hope you're ready for it. Look, I'm ready. I'm I'm ready to talk about it, man. Um, because it seems like sometimes the word work, it, it, it I don't want to I don't want to say that it, it seems like there's a stigma around it now, but I think our approach to it is just so much different than it used to be in the past. And I think that was just because of the boom of technology and social media. I think it has now become uncool to put in work. I think the way social media is now, you do less work, you get paid more. That's how they all show it. But that is never the case and it never will be. Um, so just before you get into this episode, before we dive in, we want to really get that out of your mind. Like to get to any sort of level of greatness, um, to get to MJ level, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's Jackson or Jordan, to get to LeBron level, who, by the way, just, you know, he's the all time scoring leader in NBA history, the GOAT. Anyway, not going to go there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not going to go there. I digress. I, was I digress. <laughs> definitely another episode there for yeah, sure. I might feel some type of way about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, look, I, and for anybody, right, it, whoever you decide is to go, all of them put in a certain amount of obsessive work to get to that point, right? They didn't, they didn't just wake up, roll out of bed, you know what I'm saying? And, and just go ahead and be great. They put in thousands and thousands of shots that we never see. Football players on the other end, I mean, thousands and thousands of field drills that we never get a chance to witness, right? We only see what happens on Sunday or during the week if you're in the NBA. Um, but so many different opportunities are taken by folks who definitely understand what their purpose is and understand that a lot of hard work or just work in general um, is what gets them to where they need to be. So just to establish that going into this conversation, we do need to understand that there is a difference between the two. There is a difference between working hard and working smart. And within our industry, which is self-help, personal development, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it, um, there is always a lot of weight put on working hard. And I completely understand. I mean, I, I just talked about people who worked hard. Um, you know, working hard to, to anybody might look a little bit different, but just for the general public and anybody who's listening or watching, I'm sure working hard for you means, you know, you're putting in those long hours, man, the, can the, the light, the candlelight is burning forever. You're just constantly putting in that work. You're, you're the first one in last one out. Uh, you're, you're, you're either growing gray here now, or you're bald like I am. And, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to find a way to, to, to make ends meet, you're, you're taking on all activities, you're trying to impress your boss by by ensuring that you are always the first one there and the last one to leave. And I, I would say to an extent that does work. I, I would say that, you know, especially when it comes to upper management, they see that, they see the work you're putting in, they understand that you are working as hard as you possibly can. But I think we'll see in this industry now, or not even just this industry we're in, but any industry around the world, a lot of the focus is on production. And 
regardless how many people you may have in the company, how long you may be working, how many hours you may be putting in, how much work you may be putting in, how calloused your hands and your fingers are, production is the only thing that matters. If you are not producing, if you are not efficient, you will be replaced by another person or by a robot in the way, you know, in the in the type of society we're living now. Um, so I think it's also important to understand that working smart would also be helpful too. I think working smart may have an edge over working hard. And here's why. I think when you're working smart, you're focusing on productivity and you're trying to come up with ways to be more productive, to be more lean, to be more beneficial for the company as a whole. I think if you can also find a way to save more time doing some of the daily tasks that you have, you might be able to elevate yourself into another stratosphere within your company where they can give you more responsibilities because now you're not taking on every single little thing. You're not you're not you're not focused on all of the little tasks that you have to do. You're looking at the bigger picture. Especially if you do have a team that is working underneath you and you're able to delegate to those people, you're able to teach them the right ways, you're able to you're able to to transfer the sort of the foundation methodology that you've been able to to take under your wing. You're able to to educate them in order for them to be productive and efficient. And now they're carrying the task that you once had. You can then build up your entire team that way. And there's no way you would be able to do that as one person if you're working hard. And I've look, I've seen it in some of the companies I've worked with, we'll see where you do have that one person who wants to do everything and they take pride in doing everything. They're like, no, I got it. I'll do it. I'll take care of it. I'll no, I'll do the budget stuff. I'll do the finances. I'll, I'll do the management side too. I will do the customer relations side. I will... They want to take on everything because they only trust themselves to be as great as they were. If you look at some of the greats, it's the same way, right? Tom Brady, I'll call my own plays. Michael Jordan, I'm taking the last shot. And there isn't anything wrong with that. But you have to be able to trust your team. And once you're able to delegate and you show that your team, you show to your team members that they can be trusted with the work that they're given, they'll be more, more motivated to do more work for you. They'll be happy. They'll be, oh, yeah, my, look, my boss is great to work with. I get these responsibilities and I run with it. I feel as though a lot of these companies, sometimes you may have upper management that is so, they're so stifling with you. They're so strict with what you're doing that you don't, you, you don't feel like you're able to be free. You don't feel like you have a say. You feel as though you are an extension of your boss rather than your own self. And I think, especially those who are in management, I think now would be a time to really look at your team, look at look at those who you're training, who you are teaching, who you're bringing up. You don't want you don't want to create another you. You want to create somebody who can help grow the company. What are some of the weaknesses that you may have yourself that you can find a strength in somebody else? Can they bring something to the table that you probably weren't as efficient in before and that can elevate the entire team to another a much higher level than you were before? You wouldn't get that just working hard. And again, working hard and working smart, they're, they're two sides of the same coin. You have to have one with the other, but you have to also ensure that the balance is right too. You don't want to be overworking yourself and not giving enough to your team so that your team doesn't know how to react in certain situations if they've never been into it, right? There's only so much, there's only so far education in the classroom can go you know, it's controlled, right? There are problems that that the, the professor or the teacher are right on the board. You have to solve those problems. There's an answer to it. In life, when you're working with other clients, sometimes there is no answer in a guidebook. So you have to be able to, to teach and educate your, your team to be able to handle those situations when they do come up. Because there's nothing worse than than your team being unprepared for a situation because it then reflects on you and maybe your management style that might not be working for you. So we'll see. I'd, I'd love to get your take on it as well um, to to really see if you can you can describe the difference between working hard and working smart. I know you have experience, you know, especially on the management side. You were also an employee, too. So you see it from both angles. And I, I just want to see if you have any advice for those folks out there who um, are still they're, they're still on the level of working hard because they that's all they know. That's all they've ever done. 
um, and they they may have some troubles transitioning or trying to balance the the working smart side of things. What are your what are your what is your take on that? Uh, for starters, I just want to give you credit for um, articulating it very well. Um, I, I agree also with you um, between uh, you know having the ability uh, to transition into uh, working smart, um, but I but I will say I, I think it re requires um, refining the ability to balance both, knowing when to work hard and execute, and when to um, you know, alleviate those stresses of working too hard and transitioning it into working smart. Um, I think <clears throat> to give a good example of this, very simple. Um, you guys may have already heard of this, but I'll just kind of just word it a little different. But um, I think the best way to kind of think about this when you're applying the ability of working hard versus working smart and learning how to, to transition in between utilizing both skill sets is this example here. Um, you, you're in a village. Um, you are the fisherman for your village. Um, so it's up to you to, to be able, from your experience that you've, you've developed and learning how to fish, maybe someone taught you and passed that along to you. So now you're the fisherman. So you're doing the brunt of the work of going out, making sure that you can get your reels prepared, you know, your, your rods ready, your lining, your fish nets, uh, your fish hooks, and you have everything in your artillery to go out and hopefully have a successful run and getting the job done of catching something for the day. Now, as you being the one responsible for your village, um, you know, they rely on you. So obviously you're putting a hell of a lot of pressure on yourself to go out there and to catch something so that we can eat for the day, right? Now, this is where it comes into transitioning into working smart. Uh, why not allow yourself to take what you've learned from your experiences of working hard and being diligent and dedicated to your craft or whatever it is that you're working on and being ambitious of and molding that into taking some of those folks from your village, taking a group of them and, and teaching them what you know, teaching them how to line up their reel and how to throw out and cast that rod, you know, how to reel it back in, what bait to use, when to use that bait, what season are you in so that you can have the most success, right? Uh, no great team is able to be great without understanding the fundamentals first, and having a leader to step up to be able to not delegate, but to communicate and work with each other to accomplish one common goal. And then this scenario, that's the conquer hunger. So we want to make sure the entire village is fed. fed. How are we going to do that? Teach those who, what you know, you may have had one person to pass that down to you, but that doesn't mean that is all it should be as a move forward, um, you know, to, increase the success of what it is that you're all trying to accomplish. So teach them. So now you, instead of you being the only fisherman, there's a team of fishermen out there and everyone has an opportunity to do their fair share and dig this. You have a higher probability of catching more. Um, you could take that person who was the, the initial fisherman and now it gives them an opportunity to work on another area that the village needs help with. Um, because now he has trusted and trusted that the skills that he provided and taught to his group of villagers, now they are capable and are able to thrive in their own, and come into their own right. And the beautiful part of that transition is that they have a mind of their own. So they're able to apply their thoughts, apply their style, and to make what you were doing possibly even better, which is the goal. So not only are you catching fish, you know, you're catching crabs, you're catching, you know, uh, you know anything that you can so that there's a variety of options available for everyone. So in doing that, you've satisfied the need for the entire village just by having that mindset. Now, I applied that example to say it's no different than anything else that you're doing in your life that requires um, a teamwork um, and, you know, working with others to, to accomplish a goal. That camaraderie that you rely on is really important. We all were there. I was at a point in my career um, early on where I was, I, I had that mentality of working hard and being the hardest worker in the room, letting my work speak for me. Some areas that's still the same to this day. 
where I know when to apply that effort of working hard and being diligent. Um, but I also had the the privilege and 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 was able to benefit from encountering a manager in my earlier years to help me understand the importance of how to work smart and trusting and relying in the team. And because of that, when it came time for me to manage my own team, I was able to then apply that knowledge and transition that over. Now, as we know, it isn't easy. I'm not going to sit here and say it's day and night. No, it's a process because it requires accountability of you to reflect in what you're doing. So the same way as Jay mentioned earlier in those examples where I'm going to take on A, B, and C, and I'm going to run it all because I'm capable of do it, doing it doesn't mean I have to, to be the one to lead it. Because if I'm not around and if something happened to me today or tomorrow, who's going to be able to pick up that mantle mm -hmm. if I didn't invest into the team that I had stored before, before me? Obviously, if you're in a position of management or you've been called upon for these opportunities, someone else saw something in you that maybe you don't all see the pieces on the board and the qualities you possess, but they're there. I think sometimes we get so focused that we're caught up in our own ways and we get in our own way that we trip ourselves up. So like, in the past, for myself, I may have had an, an assignment that was, you know, came down towards me and I would have maybe, let's say it was a, a, a sheet of spreadsheet of 100 things to get done on that list. And I'm like, I can do it. I know how to do all of it. No problem. And I go do it. But guess what? It's going to take me five times as long to get it done. It's going to take accomplishing a goal. It will get done, but it's going to take it longer than it should have taken. And it's going to burn me out. I'm going to be exhausted. Mm. And then at a point, at some point, I'm going to be looking to point fingers like, man, damn, they keep coming at me for everything. I got to do everything. And that's what happens with a lot of people that you get yourself stuck into this accountability or shift or shifting blames or pointing fingers because you feel like you relied on too much. Mm. No different. Than some of the greats, man, why, why, why couldn't you make that shot? Cause you not me. Why couldn't you? But maybe if I, was in the gym and I gave you that, you know, gave you some, some pointers, you know, and I, and, and I allowed you to get in a position that you felt comfortable to take that shot. Maybe you would have taken more. Um, so in that scenario, why not pull a team of a few folks together? I actually had something like that similar happen recently this past week where I had a project that was time sensitive that kind of came on. And uh, because of my experience and because of the relationship I've established with my team, because of the trust I've built, because I've, I, I drive in a center focus of for them to believe in their efforts and to know their worth and to see how talented they are, where I pulled a few folks in. I'm like, OK, I need half of my team to work on this. Hey, I'm going to I selected you guys because I know you can get it done. Not that everyone can, mm -hmm. but I also need this person to be driven to control this area of what we do. I need this person to control that. I need this person to control that. And I need you guys. Let's get this done today. Let's all work together. I'm working with you. Do it. Let's all do it. And. You know, you're able to get it done in half the time. You know, you you, you have the energy exerted. Uh, but guess what went up? The morale, right? Because it's like, man, you trusted me to get something done. And because I know how hard you're willing to work, I'm going to work with you just as well. And we're going to all accomplish this. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the part of work is smart. That's just really what it is. It's not meaning that you're not intelligent enough. It's meaning that you are able to articulate your work style and to be adaptable to what tasks you are given and how to best accomplish it without overexerting what options you do have, right? Or, you know, being able to maximize how to get it done the most efficient way. Mm -hmm. And that's really life. That's really what it is. So if you find yourself being really good at something and you have a team of people around you that could support you, kind of look around and see what their strengths are and how you can best utilize that so that they can be a part of accomplishing those goals with you. Because if you could do that, then you, my friend, you are already ahead of the game and you are working smart. So there's a good chance you won't be feeling this burnt out in life or anything that you're working on in general. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that, Jay? Man, that's, that's well said. I, I, I really... I really love the analogy that you had with sports there, um, especially when it came to taking that shot. Because we, anybody who's a sports fan, I know this is, you know, this is our podcast on the on the podcast side. We also have a Chromas Fitness. Anybody who understands, you know, competition or sports in general, they know that if if your team member does not have the confidence to take that last shot or to to catch that last pass, 
it might be something that you may not be able to show. It, it might be something you're not showing them. It might be something that they need to they need to kind of go back and refine with you and you give them that opportunity to do so. So I I really I, I think I might I mean I saw that this year when it came to some of the the players that are on the Chiefs team. Like a lot of them are new, right? And not a lot of them are new to Pat Mahomes, but Pat took it upon himself before the season started. Hey guys, let's let's go down to Texas. I live down here. Let's do some training, let's do some routes, let's build up some camaraderie. We'll go to dinner, do lunch. I want to understand your personality, right? Like your, I, I would say your resume brought you through the door, right? The interview, the interview allowed you to get into the job, but then now you're at your performance stage. So somebody believed you, believed in you enough to get you to where you are now. So just showcase those skills. And I think you're definitely right. We'll see it. It is up to that, that manager, or that leader to say, Hey, you know, this is, this is what you do. You're great at this. Um, just do you right. Have fun with it. Do you put it out there and, and, and be smart in what you're doing. And I think, I think the only way you get to that point is if you have worked hard to a, to an extent, right? I think you have to, you have to work hard. You have to learn from what you're doing in order to find out how you can be more efficient. Right. How, how can you be more productive with with not necessarily doing less, but being able to delegate and entrust your team for them to do the same thing? I think that's part of working smart. It's being able to to decrease the mistakes that you've that you've made in the past, to be able to learn from them, uh, to be able to delegate to your team members that you trust. Um, and I think it all really works in with itself. So I think for those out there who are listening, you know, I, I, I would say for you. Um, ensure that you understand the difference between what working hard looks like um, and what working smart feels like. I think I think we all can understand what working hard looks like. The hours, it can all be measured, right? How many hours are you putting in? How much time are you spending away from your own family? How much, how much are you dedicating to the company? I think that's the hard side of it. But to be wise, to to be to be smart, to really focus on the productivity to to make sure that the mistakes are being lessened, to make sure that there's delegation going on. Um, I think that's that smarter element that you would need to to also place an importance on as you're making progress in work or even in life or whatever you might be doing. Um, so it, it, it's not so much to say to stop working hard since it is an element of working smart, but just make sure there's a balance because you do not want to burn yourself out you do not want to get to a point where you're relied upon for everything and nobody else knows what you do uh, because that can be strenuous for the company. It could be strenuous for your team members. Um, and in order to make things work, there has to be a foundation. There has to be synergy. There has to be a central purpose that you're working towards uh, so that all of your team members can focus on that. And that gives them the motivation to keep pushing. And it's the same thing in life. Make sure you're living a purpose-driven life. Make sure you build a foundation that has that that is with productivity, with healthy habits, goal setting, making sure you understand all of those and how those elements work to create a better you. Um, so I, I want to turn it over to anybody who's listening, we'll see and, and ask that question. Have you been working too hard and not smart enough? Do you now understand based on our experience, based on the discussion that we had here today? how you can create that balance for yourself, for your team, for your family, for whoever is in your immediate circle. Tell us how you plan on doing that and how you have done that. The best response that we get, of course, will be featured on the next episode of the Acromas podcast, as well as in a YouTube short. So again, this is another opportunity to build within our community, to grow within our community, uh, to allow ourselves, all of us, to grow together and work a lot smarter than we have been in the past to to understand different avenues where we may be able to grow and other avenues we might need to leave behind. I think that's that's all a part of growth. And the importance is understanding that, you know, the difference between working extremely hard and working much smarter within yourself and your team. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to start doing that today. Start by following us if you haven't already. Right. Instead of working hard, trying to figure all this out on, on your own, you have a whole community of like minded folks out here who are working smart to better themselves each and every single day. So we're going to remind you of how you can do that. Right, Jay? 
we are going to do it because I know there are some of you guys, this might be your first episode and welcome to it. We are 109 episodes in. We've we've come a long way. There's been a lot of growth. There's been a lot of working hard. And of course, through that, through that hard work, we found different ways that we can work smart. And we want to thank you for joining us if this is your first time. If you've been here before and you still do not understand what we do or how you even spell our name, I will help you out once again. A-C-H-R-O-M-O-U-S. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you can hear a podcast. But if you are watching our faces now, that means you're working really smart and I need you to work just a little bit smarter. Hit that like button hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. The next time you hop on YouTube and you're scrolling through your feed and you're looking for a video that will hit you exactly where you need it to. You're looking for the gems. You're looking for a way to work a little bit smarter than you have been. This episode will be the best episode for you. And most of all, we'll see. It's free to do so. Smart thing to do. <laughs> like our content, subscribe to it, turn on that notification bell. Don't forget to share. Each one, each one is our motto, and it starts with you. Mm. Look, I mean, there's no excuse to go forth in this week and not understand exactly what it looks like to work a little bit smarter. So grow with us, continue to share your stories, continue to comment. We will give you that platform to speak. That's what we do here at the Acromas Podcast. And we hope that you enjoy this very, very productive and smart working week. Until next week, it is your boy, J.H. Gibbons. And I'm Wilson. <laughs>